Lumber prices have crashed again. Well, actually, they've been crashing for a while now. The market overall peaked back in February or March of 2021, and it's been a downward trend ever since. So is this trend going to continue, and will we be paying less over time, or is now the time to buy? Inflation is a super hot topic right now, and in the headlines and news everywhere. But interestingly, it's not the biggest factor in determining the price of goods and materials like lumber. Actually, demand is the biggest factor. Housing starts, new construction, and remodelers, or fix and flippers, drive demand for construction materials, lumber being one of the biggest. Looking at the housing starts trend in this graph, we see that it's actually been trending up since the last market crash. And in this graph, we see new home sales and the explosion that happened in 2020. All of a sudden, though, new home sales peaked in summer of 2020 and new home starts peaked in spring of 2022. Not only are new home starts and sales down, existing home sales are also down substantially. The National Association of Home Builders reports that existing home sales are down 5.9% year over year and over 20% compared to 2020. Add to this, we have a sudden spike in interest rates. Interest rate control allows the Federal Reserve to incentivize or discourage borrowing depending on the needs of the economy at the time and in the near future. The Fed, of course, cannot stop people from borrowing to buy things like homes or lumber. But by rapidly increasing interest rates, which get passed on to the borrower, they can make it very unappealing or hard for people to borrow because the cost of borrowing becomes too expensive. This has the effect of reducing credit and therefore reducing the amount of money in the economy and reducing inflation. The problem is that for decades, interest rates have been very low. And then all of a sudden, in 2020, the U.S. government and governments around the world created so much stimulus that inflation is now at a 40-year high. That means if you were born since 1982, this is the highest inflation in your lifetime. To try to rein in the record high inflation, the Fed has raised interest rates several times this year and has said they will continue to do so to get inflation under control before it causes more severe problems to the economy. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said in a recent public address that higher interest rates are likely to bring below trend growth. Higher interest rates, slower growth, and a softer labor market will bring down inflation. They will also bring some pain to households and businesses. This is the unfortunate cost of reducing inflation, but a failure to do so would mean far greater pain. The Fed is trying to learn from mistakes they've made in the past, and therefore they're willing to make things hurt now so that we don't hurt worse later. Unfortunately, it's making the cost of everything bought on credit go up. A year ago, a 30-year mortgage was under 3%. And in just the past handful of months, it's over doubled to 6%. That might not seem like much, 3%, but it's significant when you apply that to a $450,000 mortgage. The difference is literally hundreds of dollars per month, something that most people don't have laying around. This is why new home starts, new home buying, and existing home buying are all in a downward trend. The last of the demand is drying up because there's no one who can afford these huge increases in interest rates. All of these things, of course, have a direct and immediate effect on the price of lumber futures, causing the crashing trend that we're seeing now, with futures down nearly 75% and in a steep downtrend. The difference this time, though, is that prices aren't going to shoot back up like they did in the past. The trend is probably going to stay flat or even lower. What does that mean for us? Since the drivers for prices is demand and demand is likely to continue on its downward trend, you would think we would see further downward pressure on lumber prices, right? Well, that's not the entire story. You'll notice that over the past few months, lumber prices have been fairly stable, and sheet goods like plywood are coming down slightly, but not as rapidly as they did compared to a year ago. How is this possible if the price they're paying for the same goods has come down so far? This really has to do with the retailing business and how they use pricing to their advantage. 
A big factor in the early price spikes in lumber was a bidding war between retailers willing to outbid the next person to get their hands on materials. Seeing the spike in stimulus and the record low interest rates, they made a gamble that housing and construction would explode. They were right. In order to profit, they have to have product to sell. And as we all know, demand far outran supply, forcing prices we pay even higher. Because they had at least some stock on hand purchased at a lower price and were able to sell at a higher price, they had a huge profit margin until that inventory ran out. New inventory bought at a higher price but sold at a slightly lower price has a net loss, but a smaller overall loss than the huge profit on the inventory they had when the prices originally spiked. The problem is at some point the demand trend changes and he who is left holding inventory holds the hot potato. Since retailers don't want to take a massive loss, they're not likely to dump inventory on the market, which would have the opposite effect, a glut of supply, forcing them to take a huge loss. Since all of the new lumber they purchased simply diluted the existing inventory in their warehouses, their average cost basis, or the average cost of all their inventory, had only increased slightly they're able to bring prices down slowly so as not to take a massive loss on their current inventory. Somehow, through all of this insanity, they're actually able to make a profit. This is all part of the business of retailing, and whether we like it or not, they control the prices. So how do we use this to our advantage? Well, you're looking for someone who has a massive backlog of inventory, somebody who got caught with the hot potato, who doesn't want to sit on it and is looking for help to move it through quicker, versus someone who either doesn't have the inventory problem or is willing to hold prices higher to prevent taking a large loss. There are a lot of other factors affecting the price of all goods, including lumber, and that is broad demand, including fuel prices. Retailers are super happy to increase prices when demand spikes, like seasonally, or in the case of incredible stimulus and low interest rates, but a drastic dry up of demand will force them to lower prices, and keep them low to keep product moving and to keep the lights on. Of course, this isn't lumber producers' first rodeo. They're always looking ahead. Some have made significant investments using their massive profits over the past few years. The effect is they're more efficient, and that makes them more competitive, helping the customer with lower prices. But of course, a flood of lumber to the market that doesn't want to buy is bad for business. Many producers have reduced output, announced curtailments, or even shuttered the doors entirely. The pain Fed Chairman Powell mentioned is likely to require some tight cost controls to stay alive. So are sheet goods like melamine and plywood going to follow suit? Yes. We've seen nearly 60% drop in the price of most common plywood sizes like 1932 seconds and 2330 seconds over one year. Each product has different manufacturers and supply chains. So the prices will change depending on a lot of factors. Some sheet goods like hardwood plywood are affected by global economic conditions since a lot of it is imported. So things happening in other parts of the world are a factor. We really aren't seeing much softening in the prices for hardwood plywood and cabinet grade sheet goods yet. But if demand stays low, the downward pressure should give some pricing relief. Lumber prices are a complicated thing. Since so much of what we buy is affected by things happening around the world, it can be really hard to predict what something will cost from day to day. It's clear this time is going to be different. It's highly unlikely we will see yet another surge in demand, even though prices are down so much. This is because the pressure of raising interest rates and a lack of buyers is going to force things to slow down a lot. Things feel a little crazy and weird right now for a lot of us. There's a lot of uncertainty about what the pain the Fed says we should expect at work and at home will feel like. The right thing to do is keep your spending within your budget. Look for opportunities to buy at a fair price if you need to complete a project. And don't overspend. With good planning and patience, a project can be completed within a reasonable budget. What is very empowering in any situation is knowing that there are alternatives to all this ridiculousness, opting out if you will. We'll be creating another video diving into how you can take control of producing building materials yourself 
and avoid a lot of the issues we've discussed in this video.